Okay, uh, so thank you very much. Um, indeed, today I'm going to talk about using Google Trends to uh, assess well-being. Um, and just a note, uh, so this is, so the slides are a little cut off, but this is a joint work with a large number of people. Um, we're based here in France, so despite the fact that I'm the American representative, this is really a French work um, that, uh, that I'll be presenting. So here I'm going to be talking about uh, subjective well-being. And uh, in this respect, it differs somewhat from what we sometimes are thinking about well-being. I'm not thinking about sort of more objective indicators, which might be income or health status, but it's really about how people feel and how satisfied they are with their lives, how happy they are, how stressed they are, and so on. And we're interested in this. Um, in these sorts of indicators because they sort of tell us something different than the standard indicators about income and health and education. In particular, we may be interested for what these indicators can tell us about how people feel in response to an event, how they feel in response to a, a policy reform, a legal change, um, and how their behavior changes. However, to really use these, what we would like to have would be a panel data set. Um, so a panel data set, a panel data set is one that would follow many units or individuals over time so that we could look at differences between those people or units over time. Um, this is difficult to do at a level which is interesting for a sort of macro policy. And um, you can sort of see up there, I have uh, just a plot. Uh, it's a little bit cut off, but this is um, from uh, Gallup Analytics. So Gallup does a poll uh, daily or uh, even, uh, yeah, daily in the United States. It measures subjective well-being. Uh, many different indicators, and this particular one is happiness, and we can see it sort of bouncing up and down over time. Um, so this is really interesting data. The problem is that surveys are quite costly, all right? And the reason, since they're costly, the implication is that most data sets either have low frequency or low granularity. So either they are once a year and, uh, and 20,000 people are interviewed, or they're much more frequent and very few people are interviewed, and so you can't look at separate regions. So that's one challenge with using this data. The other challenge is that we would like to know more about what's behind these fluctuations in subjective well-being. So up here on happiness, we already see that there's a little bit of dip coming at the point of the financial crisis, but then there's a lot of other movement we'd like to understand better as well. So what this project is going to do um, is going to sort of try to solve both of these issues. Um, so we take 10 subjective well-being variables uh, from, sorry, that should say from Gallup. So we use the data from Gallup in the US. We're going to build a model to explain the fluctuations in that subjective well-being data using Google searches. Then we're going to apply that model to the state level using Google search data at the state level to obtain a pa panel data set at the state level. And, that, and then I'll try and show you at the end what sorts of things that panel data set can be used for. OK, so how we're getting there is we're starting with the Google Trends data, which is, um, I'll just jump back up quickly. So if you're not familiar with Google Trends, up at the top I have uh, put two Google Trends series. One is from Bien-être in France, and the other is for well-being in the United States. Um, it's sort of interesting to see that well-being is much more seasonal in the US than in France. Um, so we're going to. Uh, to use the variations in those search volumes and try to match them to variations in the subjective well-being data from Gallup, all right? Now, the problem, of course, is that we don't expect people to make it easy for us. We don't expect them to search for happy when they're happy, necessarily. So we have to go and find the search terms that people are actually more likely to search for when they're happy. Um, we. Uh, so we started out by downloading hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, volumes for words. And there are a lot of problems with using the Google Trend data. And this is sort of, I think, probably a general issue that comes up in, in many of these um, big data situations. The first is uh, interpretation. We don't always know how to interpret uh, shifts in the volume of searches. So for example, if people are searching more for vacation, 
We don't know if that is because people are planning to go more on vacation or because they're miserable at work and daydreaming about going on vacation. Um, if they're searching for abortion, we don't know if it's because they're interested in finding a place where they can have an abortion or if they're interested in lobbying against it. So there's a real problem of interpreting and understanding what's behind the words. The other, the other big problem is selecting which words to use. So I told you we downloaded hundreds and hundreds of words. In fact, we downloaded something like well over a thousand. Now, when you're selecting which indicators to use, which, which volumes to use to model with, there are a lot of dangers from this. You don't know which ones are the right ones. And if you put everything in, you may end up with a model which is overfitting, which means that your model will be unstable and inaccurate. In addition, just a quick there are lots of problems with the internet data that you have to be quite careful of. Um, so one of these are uh, peculiar spikes. We also have cliffs. We also have very strange time trends over time. This one, um, since we are avid followers of celebrity news, we were able to identify uh, this is a very sharp peak in the volume of searches for divorce, um, which was a word that we were interested in using because it seems like it could be related to subjective well-being. Um, but is in fact uh, due to Kim Kardashian's uh, announcement that she would divorce from uh, Ki Chris Humphreys. And if you don't know who Kim Kardashian is, I congratulate you. Um, okay, so our solution to this problem, um, this is unfortunate that it's cut off, but our solution to this problem was to actually uh, sort of reduce the big data. We wanted to reduce the dimensionality of our data set. We wanted to reduce the number of uh, things that we were using to predict subjective well-being. And we grouped those thousands of words, which we reduced to hundreds, we grouped those hundreds of words into 12 categories that reflect different sort of aspects of life. Um, so uh, we worked to make sure that they both made sense because you could easily, using purely uh, statistical methods, you could easily end up grouping words that had nothing to do with each other in any sort of way that we understand the world. Um, and so here I just give two examples. We have one that is related, uh, one group of words that's related to job search. And we have one group of words that's related to sort of people spending time with their family. And so we're going to group those words together and form a composite variable, which be, will be much easier to use. And the benefits with this are not only that it um, is more stable and more interpretable, it also helps a great deal with selection. So here I just want to show an example of one. Uh, this is from a grouping that we called healthy habits. Um, so we have uh, search variations and search volumes for words like exercise, healthy diet, fruits and vegetables, quit smoking, dental care. Um, and you can see that even though there's a lot of variation uh, in the volume, they're all following a similar pattern. Okay, and so using those, we constructed the composite variable called healthy habits, which is in the dark line, is the resulting dark line. And something that's interesting about this series is that we pretty consistently observe sharp, sharp peaks during the first week of January, um, and then it declines over the year. Okay, so we also want to make sure, uh, this is, I don't know if you can see this, um, we are, we also want to make sure that our, uh, our categories make sense, that they make sense with what we observe in the world. So we're sort of constantly trying to check that the data that we're using makes sense given what we know about the world. And so this example uh, is a comparison of, um, of a category composed of words related to personal security. So those are words uh, like gun safety in the US, guns and firearms. Um, but also self-defense, home alarm, uh, security cameras, words like this. And so we see, and you can't see all the way over, or maybe you can, I don't know, there's a huge spike at the end of 2012, which corresponds to the Sandy Hook massacre in the US. Um, and so the red line here uh, that I'm showing is the number of victims of uh, mass murder attacks in the US, and so it's not, perfect, but it sort of shows that we're, we're not too far away from reality in, in the construction of our categories. 
Okay, so I'll maybe just go through this very quickly. We, in order to verify that our model is good, we use out of sample tests. We use a very simple model. We use just straight OLS regression. We could probably do something fancier, um, but OLS has the advantage of being fairly easily interpretable. And, um, and also, after that, we get quite sensible coefficients, um, and it's quite robust. Now, um, I'll just ah, uh, so it's it's so there you can't um, all right well I'll just say it so what we find in our model is that uh, a category called financial security, uh, which is composed of words like file for bankruptcy, eviction, um, welfare, getting help, things like this, is very powerfully uh, uh, correlated. Um, in the way that you would expect. So it is negatively correlated with positive affects or emotions, so happiness, laughter, uh, life evaluation in general, how happy am I about my life? And it is positively correlated with all of the negative emotions. We also find that family life is fairly important. So people, when the people are searching more for terms related to spending time with their families and their children, is also times when uh, happiness and laughter is, is higher. And uh, we also find that healthy habits uh, is actually uh, very closely uh, related to, to many of the series. In fact, it's one of the, the most powerful, even when we uh, include month dummies to um, control for seasonality. So when people, are feeling better, that is when they're doing things like exercising and, um, and uh, going on diets. So we have good uh, out of sample um, performance for the most part. Um, for a couple of the subjective well being variables, we do not do well. And so this is what I told you we wanted to do at the beginning. So this is our national model. Uh, this is what I told you we wanted to do at the beginning. We wanted to construct this model that explains subjective well-being using national data. And then we want to apply it um, to the states. We want to get uh, the state uh, the state level subjective well-being, which is not available through surveys. Okay? And the reason we want to do that is we want to start looking at what is the impact of different policies, how are people feeling when, uh, when different events happen. So what can we do with this? So the line, the curvy line shows the difference in predicted life evaluation for red states and blue states over time. Um, so we calculate what we think is the life evaluation for red states and blue states. Now, red states, we count as those who voted against Barack Obama in both 2008 and 2012, so they're solidly red. And blue states are those who voted for Barack Obama in both of those years. So we calculate the average, and then we subtract uh, the blue states from the red states. And when, uh, so I don't, so it's hard to see without the axis, but um, uh, bef the red line is uh, the inauguration of Barack Obama. And so what we see is that before the inauguration, uh, blue states were, uh, were, were higher. Sorry, this, the, the heading should be switched. It should be blue states minus red states. So blue states were higher prior to the election of Barack Obama. And then immediately following the election, they dropped below, and actually they started dropping down, and then they went below the level of life evaluation in the blue states. And so this is, this is interesting in terms of politics. This is interesting in terms of understanding um, variation in electoral cycles and uh, support for different political parties. This is another example of what we can do. So. Um, One of the things that we were particularly interested was in was, the, since we're economists, was the uh, impact of plant closings on communities, so the impact of plant closings on local communities. And we took uh, just seven uh, closures of plants that were highly publicized. Um, so, for example, the uh, closure of the, um, the GM factory in Janesville, Wisconsin, which was 
pretty well known in Wisconsin. It was a, it was a big deal. Uh, the closure of a DHL processing plant in Ohio where many, many people lost their jobs. So we have seven different uh, situations like this. And we try to understand what happens to different emotions when that happens. What happens to emotions? What happens to life evaluation when people are exposed to an economic shock, which is, in this case, the closure of a plant? And so the first section of the graph uh, shows levels of anger, predicted anger, before plant closure relative to other states. Okay, so this is the difference with other states, but this is, so we see that before the plant is closed right up until time zero, it's quite flat. And then immediately starting at time zero, anger starts to increase uh, for those states. And so this is the kind of thing that can only really be done with panel data, because we have to, we have to make sure that when we are identifying something like this, this is not just something that's happening in every other state at the same time, that this is not a shared trend. We have to, you really need the panel data. And so what we're hoping is that, um, is that these estimates and uh, this kind of information uh, can become useful in many respects. So we could think about evaluating legal reforms with it. Uh, we could think about um, th putting it into cost-benefit analysis, potentially. Um, that's perhaps farther down the road, and, but uh, I think that's, a, that's, that's something we could think about. Um, in addition, so I, I haven't shown this, but in addition, the categories are of interest themselves. Um, so I showed you that personal security category. It's interesting in itself to see how that category responds, how people's interests in sort of defending themselves in their home may be responding to uh, external events. Um, and so just to uh, close and also do some advertising, um, we, uh, <coughs> we uh, have built a website uh, with Sciences Po Media Lab um, where we have are put all of our predicted series online for the U.S. Um, it uh, will be going live in the next couple of weeks, but you can go and you can uh, play with it. You can move things around, and also uh, I think you'll be able to download the data directly. Um, we wanted to do this for France as well um, because we are, except for me, we are French. Um, <laughs> And uh, the problem with France is that there's no uh, frequent uh, data on subjective well-being. That will change soon. Um, there are a couple of uh, projects starting up, including one that we're involved with, with INSEE, to measure uh, subjective well-being at a quarterly frequency. But because this has just started, we can't use the data yet. But eventually, we're hoping to build up a sufficient database that we'll be able to have this sort of model for France as well. Um, what we are doing for France, we have um, another ongoing project, which is to try to understand the categories themselves and try to build categories which we hope are representative of subjective well-being. So, uh, for example, uh, mal-être, to try to understand how words related to stress, like headaches, depression, anxiety, um, how that is moving over time, how that's moving in different regions in France, and also how that's related to uh, political party support uh, going into the elections. So, thank you. <laughs>